Hi, I'm Tara from Crooked Row, and today we're going to talk about basil and pesto. So you, it's the time when our basil is just so abundant and you don't know what to do with all this basil. I mean, you can only make so many dishes so fast because basil just, the plant gets so big and bushy so fast. If you're cutting it, it does. And <clears throat> so clearly I have a humongous bowl of basil. And so today we're gonna make pesto. Now how I make pesto is we use about four cups of basil leaves and about a half a cup of walnuts, sometimes a little more, just depending on how I like the taste. And we use, you can, some people, because I freeze mine, um, if you're making it fresh, add your Parmesan. And I like the chunky Parmesan, some people like grated Parmesan, some people like shredded Parmesan, but whatever you do, make sure it's fresh, make sure it's not the bottle, like, sawdust kind. Don't use that stuff in the green can. <laughs> use fresh Parmesan and um, olive oil. And so we'll put all of that into our um, food processor and <clears throat> you just mix those ingredients. And because I try to pack as much of our food away as we can for the winter, I like to put mine in ice cube trays and then freeze them. And then I pop them out and I put them in a Ziploc freezer bag and just write on what it is. Now, <clears throat> that's pesto. You can also just use your basil and your olive oil, <clears throat> chop it up in your food processor and mix it and put it in your ice cube trays. Then if any recipe throughout the winter calls for fresh basil, you don't have to spend $3 on this little tiny pack of basil from the grocery store. You just get in your freezer, get in your Ziploc. This is why it's also important to label your Ziplocs. So I'll put fresh basil um, or when I make my pesto, I make different types of pesto with different ingredients. So I like to write the ingredients on the outside too and date it. Um, and then when, when you're ready to use, you can either just throw it in your soup, your stew, your dish, however, um, any, any which way that you're going to use. Um, I have salt and pepper here for the pesto. I don't, I don't salt and pepper when it's just basil that I'm doing. So this is going to be basil a couple different ways. Um, I, not on the table, but I also have some lemon basil growing out in the garden. And that is perfect for a cod dish that you're making, any kind of fish dish, um, some of the fish stews or soups. And it gives it such like a bright lemony flavor with like a hint of basil. It's, basil is typically, like I love to smell basil. It's typically like a very sweet anise um, or like some people think it smells slightly like licorice. Sometimes it has almost a, a cinnamony smell to it. I love it. Um, it's just, oh, there's nothing like basil. Um, but make sure, my, my boys cut this just a few minutes ago and it's dirty. So we'll wash our basil and come right back to make pesto. So we're going to go ahead and make our pesto. Christopher is my lovely assistant for today. And um, teach your kids how to cook. Even things like this is so important because it's, it's a heritage that we pass down to our kids. So um, I think that growing your food is a heritage to pass down, but cooking and preserving your food is too and they should know how to completely take care of themselves. Um, and so I feel like it's kind of a parent's duty. Um, if you don't know how to cook, learn how to cook with your children. Um, it's, it's something that brings you together as a family and, and it's just, I think it's needed. So, so today Christopher is gonna learn how to make pesto. So we have our four cups of basil in the food processor. And I want a side note. Um, there are um, a lot of, so there's purists who love to make pesto and they do it with a mortal and mortar and pestle, not pesto, pestle, and where they kind of smash the ingredients together. Um, I have seen reports online of people saying that if you do it in a food processor, it'll turn your pesto bitter. I have done this for about seven years. 
Um, we have never ever had bitter pesto. Um, so, and I have, there are people who say that it'll ruin the pesto to freeze it with Parmesan cheese. I have frozen it with Parmesan cheese and it's, it's all the same for us. I don't know how it'll work out for you and your situation, but it's been the same for us. So, we've got our four cups of basil and you just put in the whole leaf, uh, cleaned and ready to go. And uh, next, Christopher, you'll go ahead and you'll put in a half a cup. I use walnuts. The traditional recipe is pine nuts. And while that's delicious, uh, pine nuts are extremely expensive. And, and most recipes even state that you can really use any nut you want. Um, if I was making this fresh, I would toast the walnuts. But since I'm not making this fresh and I'm using this to freeze, I just put the walnuts right in it. Um, but if you're making it fresh, go the extra step to just heat it up in a skillet. Um, don't burn them because it gives it a bad flavor. But you can just just touch touch them in, while they're in the pan and see if there's warmth to it. And it just gets those oils going in the nut. So um, Christopher is measuring out the walnuts to put in. That's good. That's, that's more than good. <laughs> and... I'm not gonna add the Parmesan cheese to this one. This will be without Parmesan cheese. And um, we will put the lid on, oops, we'll put the lid on my very old food processor. This is this thing is like 20 years old. Um, and I like to add, some people will just add the olive oil in and mix it. But I kind of like to give everything a chance to mix up before we put the olive oil in. No rhyme or reason to it, it's just how I do it. So while Christopher uh, makes the pesto and then loads it into the trays, I'm gonna drink coffee. So here we go. scrape down the sides because there's some whole well not whole leaves but there's some pretty good chunks of leaves in there that we actually want to be more ground up than what it is so that's good and it definitely needs some more oil so let's grab another thing of olive oil please um, check your consistency while you're doing it um, you may need more or less than the recipe calls for so Keep checking the consistency. <laughs> okay. Now, ours turns a little darker uh, because we don't add lemon. There, uh, a lot of the recipes call for lemon to keep it that really bright green color, that beautiful color of pesto. Um, I don't because I feel like it completely changes the flavor and adds that sourness that I don't like in it. Now I love lemon, but I don't care for that. Hi, hey guys, so uh, as soon as you get your pesto in the freezer and it gets done freezing, you're going to want to take all those tiny little cubes of pesto and you're going to want to pry them out of your ice cube dish. And so you're going to want to have little bags, little Ziploc freezer bags like this prepared. Or use gallon size. Yeah, yeah, any Our size Our grocery store only gave us quart size. But. Yeah, and so uh, you're going to want to have what kind of pesto you made mark on the bag as well as the date that you made it so you can be sure that it is fresh. 
And so you're going to want to have that marked down before you have the pesto cubes in the bag because that can cause some problems with writing it. <laughs> so, roll finished. Christopher did a great job. We have six ice cube trays full of our no parmesan pesto. Uh, we're also going to, not on video, but we're also going to do um, a lot more basil and things like that. But I just wanted to show you guys a great way to get this in your freezers and have it stocked for winter. Um, I work a full-time job. My husband works a full-time job. So we sort of homestead on the side. So we have to have as many tips and tricks as we can. And our kids have to have as many tips and tricks as they can. Because there's many nights when um, you know, Christopher's almost 17, so he's home alone. He knows how to grab pesto out of the freezer and make himself a meal. Um, and then he doesn't have to spend the money or, you know, do anything unhealthy <laughs> to go out and get food. Um, so he is equipped to take care of himself. And so now from start to finish, from, from planting the basil to harvesting the basil to storing the basil and then cooking with basil, he knows exactly what to do, right? Yep. <laughs> was that easy? That was incredibly easy. He's single, ladies. That's all I'm saying. And he cooks. And he's smart. <laughs> well, that was fun and that was easy, so. And remember, if we can make pesto, anybody can. Bye. Bye.